there is a brother that was delivered of mental disorder. So I wish after the healing, I say go back to where you were mentored and live there among them. So, so now it's fine. It's, it's back here now to say thank you. So that after that, whatever we have in our possession as a gift, which I promise because I was very happy that God can use me to do that. As a testimony, we hand over to you. Now it's perfectly okay. Let's wash. Let us pray together. Father, manifest your strength in their witnesses. In Jesus' name. Amen. Commit yourself to their protection. Amen. Commit yourself to their protection. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. It's a safe journey. Thank you, sir. The middle lane is on. Come in. No matter what appearance look like, whether he carry gun or cutlass, ask Jesus immediately to manifest his strength in your witness. And if Jesus manifests his strength in your witness, whatever you say there shall be said in him. You'll be able to command him, listen, you will listen. All authority here on earth within that name. So safe journey. Thank you, sir. Just as he promised, TB Joshua is sending a team to locate the husband of Mrs. Dixon, who has had a severe mental disorder for the past 14 years. Mrs. Dixon boards the bus, followed by two of her daughters as they prepare for the long journey ahead of them. They are accompanied by a team of evangelists, including a camera crew, who have been specifically sent by TB Joshua under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let's follow them on their journey as they make their way out of the church gates, through the streets of Lagos, to the village where they believe the man is living. It has been many years since they have seen him, and no one is quite sure of his location, or indeed, what state they will find the man in. After a long day's travelling, here we can see the bus carrying the Emmanuel TV team, arriving at the village of Mr. Dixon. They travel down each street and through the marketplaces looking for him. Finding no trace of him, they decide to stop at a local shop to ask if anyone knows of his whereabouts. They climb out of the bus, hopeful of getting a step closer to discovering where he might be. So we are from Synagogue Church of All Nations in Lagos, and uh, we are here for one Mr. Dixon. We learnt that he is somewhere uh, around in this village. Uh, the man that has a mental problem is, is mad. Where do you think he will be by now? Uh, by now, I believe Dixon might have gone to the bush to look for uh, bamboo or uh, wood. I can send this man to you because he is from this uh, uh, village here with the man of God that sent you people here. Uh, we have the faith so that this thing will be okay. And you, when you get home, ask him to pray for us that you met here. The man did this with the faith that because Prophet TB Joshua had sent the team, Mr. Dixon would be in safe hands. Encouraged by the positive response from the local shop owner, they reboard the bus, accompanied by the young boy who was sent to assist them in their search. The vehicles drive off and they continue in their mission to find Mr. Dixon. They are now traveling towards the outskirts of the village. Their search for Mr. Dixon leads them to a rural area and into the bush. With the young boy leading them, they wade their way through the undergrowth as they endeavor to locate Mr. Dixon. Going further into the forest, in this wild and natural habitat, there is no pathway, 
the team have to clear their way as they continue to delve deeper into the thick bush. The young boy leads them to an uncompleted building. Taking a look inside, searching the empty rooms in the entire property, we can see that the place is completely abandoned and there is no sign of Mr. Dixon. Undeterred, the team continues their search. They go on trekking through the untamed environment looking for Mr. Dixon at every twist and turn. He could be anywhere in this vast jungle. Unable to find him, the team make their way back to the village. Without any hint of Mr. Dixon, the team get back into the bus to look elsewhere. Once again they are on the move, going back along the streets of the village, with one question in mind. Where could Mr. Dixon be? The vehicles maneuver their way down the dirt track, the team still looking for clues to where Mr. Dixon could be. The team encounter a group of local villagers and stop to ask them if they know the whereabouts of Mr. Dixon. One of the women volunteers to take them to a place where he is frequently seen. This woman is going to lead us to where they used to find him also uh, to see if we can find him there. Several residents go with the Emmanuel TV team joining in the search. The area they find themselves in is far from the rest of the community on the edge of the bush. As a light rain begins to fall, the team looks into the distance and spots a man coming down the rough trail carrying a long bamboo cane on his head. Could this be him? Could this be Mr. Dixon? This is an extremely tense moment for everyone especially for the children of Mr. Dixon, who have not seen their father for 14 years. Could this be the moment they have been waiting for? One can only imagine the anguish they have suffered over the many years and the anticipation they now hold in their hearts as they wait to see if this could indeed be their father. Mr. Dixon has been found. How do you feel seeing your daddy in this condition? I feel bad. I remember my daddy has money. I was a bit in us, a bit in but now. For, for how long has he been like this? 14 years now. I've never been to this place before. This is my first time coming. This is a bad thing. I can't believe my eyes. For how long has he been like this? It's long, sir. Sure. But I can't, I can't sleep. He was a big man now. Huh? He built a house, a girl house, girl children. He had money. Looking filthy and dirty, wearing rags, Mr. Dixon walks along with a bamboo cane on his head and grasping a cutlass in his hand. He is found wearing odd footwear and talking to himself irrationally showing every sign of someone who is mentally ill. What could be going through the mind of Mrs. Dixon as she sees the disheveled figure of her husband walking past her? Mr. Dixon becomes hostile as the team approach him and try to take the cutlass he is holding. Refusing to release the cutlass, he clearly demonstrates his wild nature, dangerous and unyielding. Mr. Dixon walks away. Okay. Mr. Dixon shouts aggressively at his daughter and raises the cutlass. 
manifest your strength in our weaknesses in Jesus' name. One of the evangelists uses the name of Jesus Christ to seize the cutlass. All signs prove that Mr. Dixon is not in his right mind. Judging from the dirty ripped clothes he is wearing, his abnormal behavior, and even this place in the bush he has chosen to live, he is completely unkept. It is plain to see the deplorable condition he has been living in for the past 14 years. Mr. Dixon is now walking towards an abandoned building. Inside, we can see that this is where he keeps his clothes, which, soiled and rotting, are laying in a heap on the floor. He begins to cram them into a plastic sack. Having followed the instructions given to them by Prophet T.B. Joshua, the evangelists manage to get Mr. Dixon to follow them. Mr. Dixon throws his bundle of clothes into the vehicle, submits, and agrees to follow the Emmanuel TV team into the bus without any resistance. Without a doubt, this is a miracle. The family who a moment ago could not get close to him now enter the vehicle joining him inside the same bus. The last person climbs inside the bus and they are all set, ready for the journey back to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Lagos. This is the first time in 14 years that Mr. Dixon has left this village. He has been totally isolated, living in a world of his own since he developed a severe mental disorder. A successful mission, Mr. Dixon now arrives at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Prophet T.B. Joshua has come to see the condition of Mr. Dixon. The man of God lays his hand on his head to pray for him in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Spirit of living God, fall afresh on him, enter his soul, and put an end to whatever spirit that is not of yours come into his heart and establish uprightness strengthen him love renew his spirit reform him love Prophet T.B. Joshua prays that the spirit of the living God should fall afresh on him, enter his soul, and put an end to whatever spirit is not of God. He stretches forth his hand towards Mr. Dixon's hand and continues to pray. See the reaction of Mr. Dixon as he is now under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Come. Prophet T.B. Joshua beckons Mr. Dixon to stand up from the bed as he continues to pray for him, placing his hand on his head in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Your name, sir? Dick. 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 So Dick what? Dick. Okay. Glory be to God. Prophet T.B. Joshua asks him his name and he replies accurately, without hesitation, that his name is Dick. Mr. Dixon, previously restless, now begins to sleep after the prayer of the man of God. Okay, how do you feel now? Fine. You're very fine? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. 
Can you tell us your name? My name is Dick. Okay. From Wayne okay. State. I studied in Yugoslavia. We were living places. I think the cars were Amazon and others. We were living together, myself and my my family. All of a sudden, there was this problem, you know. My job were with Star back then. You know, they worked the new Montala Mohammed Airport, Strabag. I was their commercial manager there. Contracting the job, for instance, how day-to-day -day jobs sh should have been done, and so on and so forth. Nigerians and uh, those that were also working with us, uh, they were the West Germans. It was about uh, 36 years ago. Prophet T.B. Joshua just came and prayed for you. How do you feel, sir? I'm happy, fine. Thank God. Thank God for your life. I want to brush my teeth, cut my hair, shave my beard, beard, and then change my clothes. Thank you very much. How are you? Fine, fine. I'm from Greece. Okay. My name is Ellie. Hello, sir. How are you doing? My name is Kenny. I'm from South Africa. Okay. Just want to come and greet you, sir. Hi. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? How are you? I'm from Bulgaria, and my name is Litko. Thank you. Hello, sir. My name is Sarah. Rest well. We'll see you tomorrow. During the Sunday service that week, Mr. Dixon walks into the church auditorium carrying his plastic sack. A man who had been living in isolation for the past 14 years now finds himself surrounded by thousands of onlookers, yet he walks in boldly. Mr. Dixon's family are already in the church. It is clear to see their anguish as they roll on the floor as a show of their distress. All of the family members are in tears. Mr. Dixon sits down, leaning back in the chair, as his daughter weeps at his feet. My name is Amy Dixon. I'm from Edo State. This is my mother. My father is somebody I knew before. He went to the abroad to study his university. After finishing for four years, he came back. Then he worked with the Strabag construction company. He worked with the Western German because then it was white people and the black people that worked in that company that time. My father has cars. He has driver that take us to school and bring us there. He, we have servants that cook for us. Even our clothes, we have servants that wash our clothes for us. But later, I found out that my father no more go to work. He sat down at home. He will look up and down. We look up, we will be laughing. He will look down, we will be laughing. Then this thing continues for about two months. I got closer to him and I asked him. I said, Dad, what is strong? You no more got to work any longer. He said, I should leave him, leave him, him alone. I should get out from his sight. Later, I found out that one day, he walked out of the room. I started picking dust from the ground. He walked from street to street. He moved from place to places. All my friends that saw me, they would be there saying, Ami, look at your father on the street. What is happening? Your father is mental. If my mother walk on the street, they will be laughing at us. Finally, we could no longer stay in that flat. We went out of that place. Look at him here. He was the first managing contractor at Straba Construction Company. My name is Billy Dixon. My dad is mental. That's why I'm crying. My name is Dick. I worked with Straba Construction Nigeria Limited. I worked there as commercial manager. I studied in Yugoslavia very great. All I know, I could not uh, understand what happened to me for the past part two years. That's what he said. That is the whole property he has for now. The only property Mr. Dixon has is packed inside the plastic sack. Prophet TB Joshua asks for it to be opened so that everybody watching can see what is inside. These are Mr. Dixon's clothes. Rags. The only possessions he owns.
shaking his hand, Prophet TB Joshua gives Mr. Dixon a reassuring embrace. Now you are going out to take your bath and to dress up, I mean shave, and we want to dance with you. Oh, that man should praise the Lord. Oh, that man should praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, to the children of men. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, to the children of men. He has broken the gate of grass and called the bars of iron asunder. He has broken the gate of grass and called the bars of iron. Hallelujah. Mr. Dixon takes his bath for the first time in years. Having barbed his hair, shaved off his beard, and brushed his teeth, Mr. Dixon will be smartly dressed in this brand new cream suit and black shoes. He tightens his belt and puts on his shirt, and a sleek black tie finishes off the outfit. Finally putting on his new shoes, a radically transformed Mr. Dixon is all set to go back into the church. He puts on his suit jacket as he leaves.
Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Dixon. As you all know, I want to use this opportunity to thank you very much for your prayers. Um, I had mentored for the past uh, 14 years, as you can see on the video. Uh, it is an experience I cannot explain because I'm not the one that was a mentor, but a being in me. Uh, mentor these other people didn't know what they are doing. If they did, they wouldn't have been going out naked, looking for food in the doors, being, um, without having their hair cut. That is why it is difficult for me to believe I'm the one you see on the video. Uh, mental disorder people, there is hope. Uh, no matter how long their problem went, there is hope. Their, their family should look for Christ for them. But they cannot, but their family can look for Christ for them. <laughs> Cancer patients, HIV and deadly disease people, they can look for Christ. Mental disorder people cannot, but their family should look for Christ for them. We have heard it from uh, our big brother. Congratulations. If you have questions you want to ask him. Praise the Lord. I would like to ask Mr. Diskin, if you could please tell us uh, how he feels when he sees the video of his uh, moving around the village in his mental disorder. And how does it feel now? Uh, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. I'm not the one that was mentored in the village, but it being in me, it is difficult for me to answer this question. You listen to that? He said it was not him that was mentored. It was being in him. So this question is difficult to answer. <laughs> or any other question? What is the greatest challenges you face since you have been having this problem? Praise the Lord. The greatest challenges have been overcome. I have no challenges. Mr. Dixon, what is that greatest challenge now? Okay, praise the Lord. As you all know, for the past 14 years, uh, what other challenges now other than uh, uh, family, uh, business, uh, wife, and children, and uh, others I have lived to God. God that restored me can do others than I desire. Thank you very much. He said, God that restore him will take care of the rest. He said, he has lived everything for God. Can you say he's as sound as everyone here? So he has been in the village because where he was roaming about all those, what you saw, we asked him to go back. If there's any power that is possible for that, go back there and stand and see. He has been there for three months now. When the Lord restored his life, I was happy. I said, God, me too, I want to give testimony. So I bought a new car. Let's see the car. The Lord ministered to me that I should be given a new car. I have a check of 500,000 naira with a car key. Watch your screen. That is a check of 500,000 naira. And that is a key to a brand new car. The man of God says, this is also for Mr. Dixon. These are the particulars of the car. Not only this, I promise to get him at least three bedroom flats.
So what I want to do is that among I bought this car because now you are aware now you attract persecution. You will attract enemy. So I'm the one that gave you. I want to exact money. I bought the car. I want to give you exact that money so that you can now use that money yourself. Go and buy your own car. <laughs> it's a gift from me, but it may not be the right thing for you for now. Okay. We were so excited and happy. We feel you need a car, but right now, where? We value it, how much we bought the car, exact amount. We open an account for you here. You cash it in your state. Because I want to believe that it's not everybody that is happy for your life. So thank you. you take care of your life and start something. Can we see where he drive the car? Here is Mr. Dixon coming outside the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks a lot. My name is Dick. This is the vehicle key. Can you take the vehicle and go in and drive? Mr. Dixon takes the car keys and enters the car. This is the first time he has been sitting in the driver's seat in 14 years. Now I'm free. I'm delivered. I want to drive. I'm free. I'm delivered. I want to drive. A response from a happy heart. Mr. Dixon is driving again. 14 years ago, he developed a severe mental disorder and began living in the bush, eating from the ground, unaware of his past, his family, his surroundings, or even who he was. As he makes his way onto the main road, we can truly see the transforming power in the prayer of faith that was offered by Prophet T.B. Joshua. The fact that Mr. Dixon is able to operate this vehicle successfully in traffic after 14 years of mental illness is proof that his sense of awareness has been fully restored. A joyful crowd gathers to congratulate Mr. Dixon on his newfound freedom. 14 years, mental illness, problems, I'm free again, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I can drive now. Yeah, I thank God, thank you. I give all the glory. Glory be to God, the age of miracles has not yet passed. The miracle worker is still alive. His name is Jesus Christ. What's your state? I do state. If I may ask you one or two questions, can you tell me well, your last position, where were you working before the problem came? Okay. Praise the Lord. I was working with uh, Straba Construction Nigeria Limited as commercial manager. You study where? Okay, I studied in Yugoslavia economics, first degree. How many years? 26 years ago. And you are controller of how many cars as a commercial manager? Okay, we have office cars, construction cars, and delivery cars. And you have your own private car and a private have, driver? Exactly. And your private house? Yes, I have. So we learn you build a house in the village. Tell us what kind of house you build in the village. Okay, it's bungalow house. Mr. Dixie, so your last word to your people, just say hi to them. Praise the Lord. I thank God for everything that uh, has been done in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dixie. Thank you, we love you. We continue to pray for you. Everyone here.